our Christmas Eve worshiping experience at 12 o'clock at noon. This is a little different for us, and we've had to make some changes, some adjustments because of COVID-19, which ordinarily this worship experience would only be one at 6 p.m. later on today. But for this reason, we have had to, or we are making the attempt rather to be as strong as possible, as well as possible, um, with this worshiping experience by having two, one at 12 and then one also at 6 p.m. Let me make sure, am I on? Are you all able to hear me? I'm good? Okay, all right, want to be certain. All right. Now, also to those who are joining us online, we thank you. We welcome you here as well. Now, there are some things that we need to be made aware of on today. This worship experience will be abbreviated. Ordinarily, there are eight lessons that come with this worship experience. We will not do all eight on today, nor will we do eight this evening. And during this worship experience, we are encouraging and strongly asking everyone to keep their mask on. This is not a practice just for today. This is what we do every Sunday when we gather. The only persons that are permitted, if you will, to take masks off are individuals who are addressing the congregation while they are addressing the congregation. So in a few moments, I will go and sit down. And when I sit down, my mask will be back on until I stand here again. This is to do our best to keep everyone safe. We will have an offertory today. And during Christmas Eve, our Christmas Eve offering are, is usually designated to a particular group or fund, if you will. No different on today. The offering for this year's Christmas Eve worship experiences will be used for this church's own Jan and Ralph Giffords Helping Fund, affectionately known as the Gifford Fund. The Gifford Fund is used to help people in times of need, uh, rental assistance, utility assistance, transportation, food, lodging, all of these types of things. We are in a position because of the Gifford Fund to help as many people as possible. And this has been a challenging year. And we have been blessed to be able to help quite a few folks through the Gifford Fund. And we are anticipating that 2021, at least the first half of 2021, will greatly resemble 2020. So we are hoping to be able to help more people next year as well. So if you've come today prepared to leave an offering, uh, please make sure you do so upon leaving the sanctuary. We've got baskets on the backside of these pillars for you to do just that. If you are watching us online and if you prepare to give to the Gifford Fund for this Christmas Eve offering online, that's fine. If you're watching right now, you can't do it because it'll kick you out. So we want you to stay with us. At the conclusion, please give. And for those of you present, when you go home, if you would like to give that way, we would encourage you and thank you for it just the same. At the conclusion of this worship experience, uh, and uh, many of you all have already uh, picked them up, there are, this is the service of candles, uh, carols, and lights. And the end of this worship experience each year concludes with our singing Silent Night. And we also light candles in reflection to the last scripture lesson that we will come to towards the end of worship on today. When we have concluded worship, we're going to simply ask that you would take those candles and make sure you blow them out when we're done. Take the candles as well as the communion packs that you were given, and there is a trash receptacle in the narthex that you will place those in. No, we're not going to wipe those down and have them for the next group that comes through. We have enough candles for the next group that will be here this evening. Again, doing our best during this time to keep everyone as safe as possible when you come to the house of the Lord. With that understanding, my friends, Merry Christmas. We are so thrilled and glad to have you with us. Please join me in a word of prayer. 
Creator God, we thank you today for your blessings, your grace, your mercy, all that you have done. And for the opportunity that you have afforded to us to be able to worship you on this day, at this hour. Now move, O oh Lord, as only you can through this worshiping experience as we are reminded of the simple fact that you have come into this world to bless us, to change us, to strengthen us. And we look forward to your return as well. In Jesus' name, we ask all things. Amen. And at this time, folks, uh, we are still invited to stand, and you are still invited to at least hum. Uh, but let's do our best to refrain from full-on singing, okay? Uh, we will be singing Joy to the World. Let us sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ, wild fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Please be seated. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 4 and 6 through 9. The branch from Jesse. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness. He will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf, and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hands in the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, 
as the waters cover the sea.
Our second lesson is coming from Luke 2, 1 through 16. Let us listen. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirarius was governor of Syria. And everyone went into their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born unto you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said now to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, for which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger.
This scripture reading is from Luke 2, verses 8 through 10. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Let us pray. Hear us, Lord. Help us, Lord, as we learn more from you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a son is given, our children's choir. So when I was about nine years old, learned Handel's Messiah. And I couldn't stand it. <laughs> I couldn't see anything beautiful about it then. I mean, it was difficult. It was hard to learn. We had to learn how to breathe properly at the age of nine. I thought I was doing okay. We had to learn all of these things. It was rough. And the government should be upon his shoulder. I still can't do that part, Pete. Still can't get that part. Still can't get it. It was difficult to learn. And although, uh, being a pastor's kid, I couldn't understand why an inner city church choir, let alone a children's choir, would be forced to learn this. And I was so glad when we were done. Learned it, performed it, <laughs> through. Was so thrilled to be done with it. I didn't sing it again until I was in college. I was a part of Bethel College's community choir. And for Christmas, we learned and performed Handel's Messiah. <laughs> By that time, I had seen more and hopefully I had matured more in many ways and with many more to go. But while rehearsing one evening, I had to reflect on the obvious which led to the subtle. Handel's Messiah is about our Messiah. 
And our Messiah is for everyone. So Handel's Messiah should be at least offered to everyone. It's crucial, my friends, to, under, to the understanding of who Jesus is that we see the importance of the shepherds beyond their vocational link to Jesus. The passage of scripture that Carol Greenman, you just watched her read, is a part of the same passage that Bonnie Watt read earlier. That was not a mistake. It was intentional because there is the need to focus in just somewhat on the importance of the shepherds. Those of us seeking to show the inclusive qualities of Christ and the world our God has created, we especially resonate with the shepherds. They were considered to be among the least of society, even if they didn't see themselves as such for the message of the Savior's birth to be given to them and notice this first first doesn't go to the general populace doesn't go to the Sanhedrin the Pharisees don't get it goes to the shepherds first it shows that the message of Christ is for everyone. All people are included. Everybody. Politicians and preachers and the pressured and the police, everyone. The angry, the athletic, and the angelic, everyone. The PhD, the GED, and the no degreed, everyone. Wealthy and poverty stricken. The homeless, the homebound, and the house hunters, it is for everyone. All. Or as I was a kid, we would say everybody is included in this. Notice what the angel says to the shepherds today. In the town of David, a savior has been born to you. To you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. Born to you, born to them? No. Born to us. All of us. Jesus was not just Mary's baby. He was born to us all. We all can and should claim Jesus as our own. I have come and grown to love Handel's Messiah. Yeah. Especially the Hallelujah Chorus. Love the Hallelujah Chorus. And my favorite part is this. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and of his Christ. And he shall reign for ever and ever and ever. Love that part. That second singing of Handel's Messiah, that college version of Handel's Messiah taught me a lot. It taught me that it was right for me to have learned it the first time as a member of a children's choir in an inner city church. Because Jesus was born to us. And any song about him, we were entitled to sing it too. If we wanted to. And guess what? You are entitled to learn and to study and to sing any song about Jesus as well. If you want to, if you want to, born to us is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, born to us.
the one whose kingdom would reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Am I on? Is that better? Well, what would Christmas Eve be in 2020 without something else going wrong, huh? <laughs> My friends, on this very special day, this church, as well as many churches, in this country and throughout the world include this amazing sacrament as a part of our worshiping experience. And some would simply say, eh, isn't that supposed to be more like Easter? More Lenten than Advent? Some would argue that would be the case. But many of us, not exactly. We do believe that it fits today. It serves a purpose for today. You see, because you do not get a sacrificial death without a birth. Without a birth. And Jesus was born to us. Came into this world for us. So when we come to this table Today, let's remember that it was for us, done for us, and because of us. We've got great joy for this reason, amazing hope for this reason, peace that passes all understanding, and this was all done for love. So please, my friends, recognize and realize that this amazing gift is for you, just like our Lord and Savior was born to us. Let us pray. Again, Lord, we say thank you for your grace, your mercy, all that you have done. And again, for the opportunity to come to your table to eat, to drink, to dine in your presence. And we thank you for the extent of your love. Yes, knowing that you died for us, knowing that you rose for us, but knowing that you came into the world first for us we say thank you now bless this bread that represents your body this cup that represents your blood in such a way that as we leave your table we do so being more like you in every single way in your name we pray amen at this time, those of you who are with us, if you do not mind going ahead and peeling back the top cellophane layer that would reveal the wafer. Those of you at home, if you have not already done so, we encourage you to get your communion elements as well. On the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed and arrested, he took bread and a meal with his friends. And during the course of that meal, 
took the bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup, gave it to them and said, drink all of this for this is my blood poured out for the remission for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we come to the Lord's table, we do so remembering him. My favorite part of this communion narrative, as many of you are aware, is a promise that Jesus would make with his friends, a promise that I believe has been made to each of us, that he would not drink again from the fruit of the vine until we were with him. That day, my friends, will come. And for this, we can be grateful. The mode by which we ordinarily would celebrate this sacrament here at Lake Island Presbyterian Church is called intention. Where we take a piece of the bread and we dip it in the chalice, which I will demonstrate on today. But of course, because of COVID-19, we are in a position where we have to use communion packets. I can't help but to simply say I'm thankful for the day that is on the way when we can put communion packets away and get back to celebrating at the Lord's table in the way we are accustomed to. But right now, we do believe it is the Lord's will that we be as cautious and as safe as possible. So my friends, Let us eat together. Let us drink together. Let us pray. We've come to your table and we've supped. Now strengthen us as we prepare to go into your world very soon to serve you as best as we can. In your name we pray. Amen.
the writer. See if there's another verse that you can add to that <laughs> the next time. My friends, for the gospel reading, would you stand, please? John 1, the first 14 verses. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. You may be seated, my friends. At this time, I am going to ask my family. It's been a while since you all have seen all four of us. But I'm going to ask them to meet me here. At the Advent wreath. Get around in this mask. All right. <laughs> Who have not had the opportunity to meet my family? This is my wonderful and lovely and talented wife, Terry, and our amazing children, Lauren, who is a ninth grader and, and is doing well, and Jonathan who is a freshman at the University of Tulsa in Oklahoma, and he is home to make sure that we're honest with our grocery shopping during this time of year and every time of year. All right. Well, you want to write it down? Okay. Every Sunday of Advent, we've lit a candle with a particular theme of Advent in mind. On the first Sunday, we lit a candle for hope. The second Sunday, we lit one for peace. On the third Sunday, we lit the pink candle for joy. And this past Sunday, the last candle, or the fourth candle rather, for love. Today, we light the Christ candle Christ, who embodies all of these, 
and blesses us with all of these. Christ, the true light of the world. Now, we're going to ask that you all would stand as we prepare to sing our last carol, Silent Night. We're going to ask if there is someone near the back to turn the house lights down, please. And my family will come and we'll come to each of you and we will light your candle.
in your hand is a light symbolizing that we have been given the light of the world, the light that came into this world even when darkness did not understand it. Let your light shine as you leave this place today and every day. So now, my friends, may the grace of God, the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide in each of us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Thank you for worshiping with us on today.